チャンネル But is every one of us truly prepared to predict our own future? We're only、um, scratching the surface of all the knowledge that we're going to obtain by studying the human genome. As we consider the implications of this new wave of DNA technology, science is tempting us with the promise of another medical breakthrough superhuman life. A race to a new genetic frontier has started. Scientists are finding innovative approaches to gene expression profiling. Gene expression is, in science, is how a gene functions. When you activate a gene, it will make a protein. Gene expression is related to whether that particular gene is activated or inactivated, if you will, to make less protein. Academic institutions and privately funded labs are harnessing the huge potential of this science. The human genome. Is the book of life. And we have finally been able to understand what is written in this book of life. And these breakthroughs are powering us towards a once impossible goal identifying the sources of aging. What we are trying to see now is whether we can actually slow down the aging process in such a way so that these age related diseases don't happen early on. We are trying to delay the onset of these diseases as much as possible. Meet Dr. Joseph Chang. As a chief scientist of a privately funded lab, he's dedicated his life to nutritional intervention for the war on aging. I experienced in my lifetime、uh, the death of my father about three years ago. He never had a good quality of life for 10 years before his death. And I began to wonder can a person maintain an optimal quality of life throughout his or her lifespan? In these commercial labs, Dr. Chang is searching for a way his company can restore our bodies to a more youthful setting. Through our scientific studies and to our research, we are beginning to understand there are certain groups of genes that are very important in aging. Instead of just talking about groups of genes, we thought by coining a term such as youth gene clusters, it would give a better definition of what we're trying to do in our research. Within the clusters, he is looking for genes that regulate aging. If you somehow change the gene expression profile of youth gene clusters, it has either a positive or a negative impact on biological aging. He becomes interested in youth gene clusters related to mitochondria, tiny structures in our cells. These are miniature motors that fuel our bodies, maintaining our energy levels from cradle to grave. Yeah, the mitochondria, like the battery, does drain over time. If we don't recharge the, the mitochondria battery, we won't have the energy、uh, needed to run the cell. And if the mitochondria doesn't function optimally, then these early signs of aging begin to appear. Advancements in science enable Dr. Chang to probe at DNA's frontier. He's trying to restore mitochondrial function. Using gene expression technology. So, when we talk about resetting, we're not talking about structurally changing these genes. We are really resetting the activity or the gene expression profile of age related genes. We are beginning to understand there is a certain gene expression profile that exists when you were in a very youthful state. But as you age over time, That gene expression profile changes. We want to make sure that a gene expression profile stays as close as possible to what you had when you were a 20 year old. On the other side of the world, partnering with Dr. Chang at a sister lab is Dr. Josh Zhu. He's using his knowledge of the natural world 
to battle aging with the most unusual of ingredients. The scientist believes that he is getting close to discovering the key to resetting mitochondrial gene expression with the help of a fungus called Cordyceps sinensis. Cordyceps sinensis is a fungal product, a natural product. It's just similar to any kind of a mushroom. But this is no ordinary fungus. In the wild, it grows on the heads of live caterpillars from a range of remote mountains in Tibet. After years of correctly formulating the right blend through a fermentation process, Dr. Tzu is ready to take Cordyceps sinensis out of the lab and begin observational studies to discover its true power. His studies have found that after taking Cordyceps sinensis, their exercise performance capability improved. Cordyceps sinensis shortened recovery period and improved cardiovascular function. Cordyceps sinensis drastically heightens endurance and energy metabolism and fights fatigue. The results indicate that Cordyceps sinensis could potentially counteract the strains of daily life that lead to aging. We can see a Cordyceps sinensis not really just an extended lifespan, but a healthy lifespan. We proved Cordyceps sinensis is really anti-aging herb. Dr. Zhu's Cordyceps sinensis research is added to other blended ingredients to create Dr. Chang's anti-aging compound. This is the first time ever where some of these natural ingredients by using modern scientific methods to demonstrate that it can actually extend lifespan. Scientific experiments at academic and commercial labs show that our genes do not control our fate. Our research is beginning to reveal the reality that the aging process is most likely a symphony that is being played in the body. And in order to play that symphony extremely well, you need an orchestra of genes being somewhat uh, cooperating with each other to make sure that the aging symphony doesn't get out of tune. Gene expression technology is revealing a path to healthier lives for all of us. But there is a catch. With the world swelling to over 7 billion people and many developing severe conditions in their later years, two experts are turning to mankind's closest relatives. And helping them is a tiny technological invention. next few decades, the world's aging population will increase like never before. It's a high-risk game with everything to play for. Can the aging process be improved? In private research labs, scientists are now working at the frontier of DNA age research. Dr. Richard Weindruck and Dr. Thomas Prola are using advances in gene expression profiling to discover how nutrients affect aging at a genetic level. There is not a lot of difference from the control. So I would be surprised if there is much of an aging. Dietary restriction has been demonstrated to produce a change in gene expression in a variety of species. When food is scarce, our bodies concentrate on conservation and become more efficient. Dr. Weindruck believes that the key to aging well lies directly in what we eat. Caloric restriction seems to be the most potent dietary intervention to slow not only aging, but really in the quality of life. Dr. Weindruck wants to conduct a long-term study on the effects of caloric restriction on gene expression in humans. But time's not on his side. This experiment would literally take a lifetime. His next best option 
is our cousin species with whom we share a similar genetic makeup. Monkeys. In 1989, 76 healthy rhesus monkeys were divided into two groups. One group was allowed to eat freely, while the other was put on a ration diet. The results of his research have been published in prestigious scientific journals. We gradually restricted the ones assigned to the caloric restriction group by 10% of the caloric intake for the first month, another 10% for the second month, and the third month began uh, the final level of a 30% lowering of calorie intake. This scientific research was without guarantee of any significant results. But Dr. Weindruck persisted. Rhesus monkeys can live up to 40 years. That's a long, long time to wait to get a result for an experiment. But Dr. Weindruck and his team were determined to better understand the benefits of caloric restriction. Over the years, they monitored the monkeys and reviewed changes in health and signs of aging. After two decades of research, the results are stunning. The diet-controlled monkeys are healthier and living up to 20% longer. Results show that the caloric-restricted monkeys have an astonishing threefold decrease in age-related diseases. It's through gene expression profiling that scientists can determine how caloric restriction has improved the primate's aging. The effects of caloric restriction are clearly dramatic. Finding that these effects occur in primates and therefore most likely also occur in humans is really a major breakthrough. But there is a big obstacle. Because the research on monkeys takes so long, Dr. Prola and Dr. Weindruck decide to simultaneously work on gene expression in mice. This allows them to conduct more studies in a relatively shorter period of time. Dedicating decades of research work to a single experiment has been daunting, but now an even bigger challenge lies before them. When you think about the fact that we use a large number of animals, these numbers quickly add up to hundreds of millions of data points. The results are gathered together to create one of the world's largest aging and caloric restriction gene expression databases. With millions of genetic data points, a solution to accessing all this information is found in a single powerful database that employs cutting-edge gene chip technology. A powerful new tool in gene expression profiling. Each chip contains all 20,000 plus genes in the mouse genome. This database allows scientists to interpret their findings on a global scale. The gene chip technology is basically a way to monitor the expression of thousands of genes at once. This was the first study to use gene chips to study aging. Uh, this new technology provided a global view of gene expression activity. I think without the existence or the development of gene chip technology, we will not have the tools to even begin to understand what all the genes do inside our body. They're searching for nutrients that imitate the positive effects of caloric restriction, but without restricting calories. One compound that's proving to be successful in trials is a substance found in red wine, known as resveratrol. What we're trying to do at LifeGen is to identify nutrients that have this ability of caloric restriction to change the activity of genes in a way that will slow down the aging process. So individual nutrients may have, on their own, mild effects, but when combined, we'd hope to find mixtures of nutrients that are gonna have a much stronger effect. I like to think that one day, all of us can actually die healthy.